Hi everyone and welcome to West Explains Best. Today we're doing the basics of polynomials in a CUDA worksheet tutorial. It's called Basic Polynomial Operations and we're just going to kind of take it from a high level and work our way down into the nitty gritty. Let's go ahead and get started. The first prompt says name each polynomial by degree and number of terms. Okay, so we're just going to go through the examples as a way of explaining what degree is and what it means to have a certain number of terms. And both of these have specific names, of which we'll only we'll mention a few of them, but there's a lot of names for degree. Okay, now when we're talking about degree of a polynomial, polynomial, we're talking about what is the highest power. So if we have, let's say, A, the degree will be the highest power in the polynomial, in the expression. So which, what is the highest power is referring to degree. And obviously number of terms. This is talking about how many different terms are separated by addition or subtraction. Okay, So how many different uh, expressions are separated by addition, not expressions, but different terms, coefficients, constants, variables separated by addition or subtraction, okay? So looking at number one, we only have one term. How do I know? Well, I know there's only one term because there's no addition or subtraction symbol, so it's only one term. This is what you call a monomial. Monomial is probably how most people pronounce it, okay? But it, the phonetical way is mono, monomial, okay, monomial. One term. Mono means one. Meal is referring to the number of terms in a expression. So we have uh, monomial. Now degree. What is the degree? Well, it looks like there is not a degree. Okay, by looking here, we don't see. Um, I should be using purple. I don't see a number written there. So someone might think, oh, it's a zero degree polynomial. That's incorrect. Remember, anytime you see a variable, a variable is always going to be at least to the first degree, okay? If it's not one written, it's implied that there is a one there, so this is a first degree polynomial. And these have a special name, they're called linear. Okay, so if it's a first degree polynomial, it is linear. And I don't know why I suddenly decided to go light purple instead of that darker purple we've been using, but I can fix that. All right, there we go. Okay, so that is a first degree and it's a one term uh, polynomial, meaning it's a monomial that's linear. Okay, moving on to number two. Number two, the easiest thing to identify is the number of terms, and we can clearly see here that there's two terms. We have one term here, okay, and we have a second term here. How do I know those are the two terms? Well, because they're separated by this uh, subtraction sign here. So technically, really, I would like to consider this the second term and this the second term. Okay, anytime there's like a, a minus sign, it goes with the coefficient. That's how I like to think of it. I don't like to think of addition and subtraction. But that's a different issue. The main point is there are two terms here because it's separated by addition or subtraction. Okay, so this is a two term. Two terms, and there's a special name for that. It is a binomial. Bi meaning two. Nomial talking about um, the number of terms. Now, what is the highest degree? We're talking about the degree of the polynomial. We're talking about the highest degree. So there's a four and there's a uh, two. Okay, so how do you know which one to pick? You pick the highest one. So this is degree. This is a fourth degree polynomial. Um, and I think that is called quartic. But uh, you don't really need to know that. I mean, not for my specific class, but if you're just curious, uh, quartic, obviously it has quart in there, um, but yeah, there's different names for some of the different degrees. I won't name all of them, and I'll probably uh, forget about it later on. Like when you get to six, I think it's like six, six tick or something, sex tick. I don't know exactly what it is, to be honest, but you can look it up if you're super curious about it. But moving on to number three, um, we see again, there's one term, and... Uh, I know you're thinking, it's like, it's just a seven. Well, that's a term, okay? So this is one term, that makes it a monomial. One term, okay? Now, degree. This is where it gets a little tricky, but it's actually fairly simple. Notice how there's no exponent, okay? And there's not even an X or a Y or anything. So how do we figure out what the degree is? Well, the degree of this one is actually going to be a zero degree polynomial, okay? So this is a zero degree polynomial. 
How is that so? Well, I could write here x to the 0 power, and that would be equivalent to 7. So 7 times x to the 0 power is the same as 7. Why? Well, 7 times, and then we said x to the 0 power. Well, x to the 0 power is just 1. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. So we have 7 times 1 is just 7. So it's the same thing, but that's why it's called a 0 degree polynomial. Any constant will always be a 0 degree polynomial if it's by itself. Okay, So any constant will be 0 degree. Let's do one more just because I think you get it and we want to get it over to some tougher ones. This one, we have, um, now let's do a classic example. That one's the longer one. It's got one, two, three, four, five terms and its degree is six. Okay, so we got six degree and we have five terms. Okay, that's all it's looking for for this. This one's more of a classic example, which I wanted to go over. This has three terms. Okay, separated by addition or subtraction. It's called a trinomial. Okay, three. Tri, triceratops, tricycle, three. And then we have the highest degree is two. So it's a second degree. Okay. Okay, this is smaller, smaller. And usually you should write this in descending order of greatest power, two to one to zero. Okay, just as a heads up. That's called standard form. So second degree is known as a quadratic, in case you are wondering. Quadratic formula, quadratic. Okay, let's move on. We're done with that. Uh, critical thinking, why is it impossible to have a linear trinomial with one variable? Um, well, it's, if it's saying just one variable, okay, so we've had like 2x plus 3, and there's no other variables you can write, well, that would mean you need a third term like minus one, and then what would happen is these would combine. So I guess you could say something like, because like terms would combine, and then you'd be good, like terms would combine. Okay, uh, this next part we got a little bit, we have products, um, which I'll get into a little bit, but I don't. I think I'm gonna save that for another time actually, enough for a part two, um, but uh, let's just get into this first part, simplify each expression. This is for adding, okay? So if we are adding, we're essentially just combining like terms. What we need to do here is we're just looking for uh, common terms. This first one, now this is the tricky part. Anytime you have parentheses, okay, you're gonna be looking for something outside the parentheses that modifies inside the parentheses. In this case, there's none. Okay, we could rewrite this whole thing without parentheses and it would be the same. Okay, because there's nothing that modifies. And after we do this, we can easily see like terms. So we have an m squared here, m squared here. Whoops, made it too dark. And then we have, I did it for the other one, but whatever. m to the fourth, m to the fourth. And then we're just gonna combine like terms. So negative m squared plus five m squared gives us four m squared. Okay, and we want it in descending power order, so the four m to the fourth should go first. I should have done that first. Five m to the fourth plus four m to, uh, squared, and that's our final answer. That's simplified. Now, this is what I was talking about with um, things that modify parentheses. Here I have parentheses, and I have uh, this little um, minus sign out in front of it. This one's fine because there's nothing there. It's an implied plus sign, which doesn't change it. So we can actually just go 5x plus x to the fourth here. But this minus sign, anytime it's a minus sign or a number, this needs to be distributed to every term inside. Okay, so this becomes minus 3x to the fourth minus 4x. And now we can get rid of the parentheses because we've already served the purpose of the parentheses. There's nothing that can be combined inside the parentheses. We already distributed, so now we're good to go. We're gonna look for like terms. So in this case, let me use actually the squiggly method. I like that one better. So we have um, this one and this one are the same, squiggly, and this one and this one are the same, okay? So then we have five x minus, no, I need to do highest degree first, so I'm gonna do negative three x plus x to the fourth will give me negative two x to the fourth. Five x minus four x gives me positive one x. And I'm done. That's all there is to it. Okay, so if you wanted to do a tougher example like this, uh, that was not too bad. I guess they're both not bad. Okay, so both of these are not bad. 
We can essentially eliminate the parentheses because there's nothing that modifies it. This is just plus sign, implied plus sign. So I'm getting rid of the parentheses. Okay, and now I'm going to be showing you each one of these, what it's like. So we have 3x squared, 6x squared. Okay, that's going to combine to give me 9x squared. Oh, I should have started with the highest, sorry. x to the 5, notice how there's no other x to the 5th power, so we're going to leave that by himself. Okay, then we have x cubed, x cubed, that's our next highest power. 8 uh, minus 7 is positive 1x cubed. This 9x squared comes next, he's positive, so I put a plus sign. And then this 4 is by himself. There's no other 4s or constants, so I leave him. And there we go. They combined to the simplest form there. If you want to do this one quickly without removing the parentheses, we would see that we have no other x cubes, so he stays. We have an x squared here, an x squared there. They combine to 9x squared. And then we would have uh, this x, he's by himself, 5x. And then we have um, the 5 and the negative 12 to give me negative 7. And that would be our final answer. So there's our first page of uh, polynomial basics. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stick around for part two. We're going to talk about some products. Oh, I didn't see this one. Psych. If you wanted to see one of these ones, uh, let's do that. This one's a little bit tougher because we have to distribute. So let's do number 15. Let's distribute this first. Distribute that. Sorry for giving you the psych on this. Hope you guys are still watching. If you're still watching, leave a comment. I appreciate it. So we get plus 2n to the 4th plus 7m n to the third, and then plus 6n to the third. I always just remove the parentheses first by distributing. That's what I want to get rid of. I want to get a little bit more organized. 6m n to the third. Okay, now you might be thinking, okay, if there's an m and an n, what do we do? Well, we still have to look for the same power to the same degree. Okay, so for example, um, yeah, so it looks like all the m n to the thirds are the same. But if this was like m to the second power, and this is m to the first power, n to the third power, those would not be like terms. But since they're both uh, m n to the third, then these are the same. So we're going to underline these. Underline these, okay? Now our highest power is technically that fourth. So we're going to start there. We have negative 4 n to the fourth, okay? Oops. Plus 2 n to the fourth. So sorry, I should have underlined those. My apologies. I didn't see any other into the force at the moment. Okay, so they're right next to each other. Should have seen, seen, should have seen that. Negative 2 into the fourth. Okay, and then we have n to the thirds. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the... I'm going to go ahead and do the m n to the thirds first. So we have negative 16 m n to the third. Oh, no, we don't. We have that plus 7. Okay, make sure you account for all of them. If you want to cross them off if you go, that's a pretty good strategy. So I had negative 16 and then plus 7. That's going to be negative 9 mn plus 6n cubed. And then we had negative 5n. What am I doing? The minus 5n cubed should give me plus 1n cubed. And I think that's it. Okay, so that one's obviously a little tricky. You just have to make sure you keep everything straight. But that's all there is to it. If you want to stick around for part two, find each product. I'll be release, releasing that video a little bit later. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye.